One minute she's all over social media, posting selfies, calling herself an influencer and an author, acting like she's building this positive brand. And then nothing. No posts, no updates. She even changed her profile picture and took those fancy titles out of the bio. Just vanished. Why? Well, let's not pretend this is just about taking a break. This is damage control. Gypsy's entire act has been falling apart, and she knows it. Her ex-friends, Nat and Rachel, are coming forward, and they are not sugarcoating anything. They are saying Gypsy is manipulative, that she's used people, and that she's been selfish. They're calling her out on everything she did to them. The lies, the threats, the manipulation. They know her, they were close to her, and now they're exposing her. And don't think this is just her friends speaking up. Her crisis PR team, Red Banyan, is also under fire. They are supposed to be handling this, making sure Gypsy's public image stays intact. But honestly, they're making things worse. It's like every time they try to clean up a mess, they leave a bigger one behind. It's a circus. And the fake pregnancy scandal? Yeah. It didn't help either. Gypsy let people think she was pregnant, probably to grab more sympathy or attention. But when it came out that it wasn't true, it backfired hard. People wanted answers, and instead she just went silent. So today let's talk about why Gypsy is really hiding. Why she's avoiding the spotlight and what her ex-friends are saying that's got her running. Behind this isn't just a social media break. This is Gypsy's trying to dodge accountability. Let's get into that. First off, let's address the elephant in the room. Gypsy's sudden disappearance from social media. It's not just that she's gone quiet. She's actually made some notable changes. She recently changed her profile picture to something much more subdued, business casual, very toned down. And even more telling, she removed influencer and author from her bio. It's almost like she's retreating from the spotlight she also desperately wanted. So if you haven't noticed, Gypsy Rose recently changed her profile picture and took out influencer and author out of her bio. It's just a profile picture of herself looking business casual. And no, there's not trouble in paradise. Her and Ken are fine. They have a perfectly healthy relationship. Allegedly, this is just a PR haul. After so many uh, content creators have talked about her PR team and how she pays allegedly $7,500 a month and they don't seem to do anything um, from the simplest tasks like editing a video. Gypsy Rose is allegedly really feeling the heat. Um, it just seems like it's one thing after another, one controversy after another. But what's really going on here? There are rumors swirling everywhere, from talk of possible pregnancy to allegations about her manipulation of people in, in her life, including former inmates. It feels like the walls are closing in. And instead of confronting all these issues head on, Gypsy seems to be hiding. And you can't help but wonder, what's she trying to avoid? For a while, Gypsy was actively using social media to craft this image of herself as someone who had learned, changed, and grown from her past. But that image is now unraveling. People are starting to ask tough questions, like why she hasn't used her platform for any advocacy work, especially considering the ordeal she went through. And honestly, it's a valid point. You'd think someone who experienced so much would want to use that experience to help others, right? But no, Gypsy seems more interested in curating her image than doing any real good. Her silence is speaking volumes and none of it looks good. Now, let's dive into the next piece of this puzzle. Gypsy's silence isn't happening without reason. It's closely tied to the fact that her former friends are exposing her, revealing the reality behind the facade she tried so hard to maintain. And we are not just talking about casual acquaintances. These are individuals like Nat and Rachel, people who were once extremely close to Gypsy but are now coming forward to share what they experienced. Their voices are a crucial part of the understanding why Gypsy has gone completely silent. Rachel in particular has a lot to say, and it's not pretty. She met Gypsy during their time together in prison, and they formed a bond that was, at least for Rachel, based on a sense of deep trust. Rachel even named her daughter after Gypsy, a sign of just how close they were. But the relationship took a dark turn when Gypsy suddenly ghosted Rachel after her release, cutting off all contact without explanation. This wasn't just falling out, it was a calculated decision. 
a move that Rachel now believes reveals Gypsy's manipulative and self-centered nature. Russia has made it very clear that Gypsy's behavior wasn't just about a desire to move on. It was about control and manipulation. Gypsy didn't want anyone in her life who wouldn't blindly support her public persona. And when Russia refused to play along with Gypsy's carefully curated PR nature, she was shut out. We've been, we were best friends for like, I don't know, six years, honey? Yeah. Like yeah. So, um... I don't know. We spent about six months together. Um, then when I got out, I uh, stayed in contact with her like every day. Um, letters, cards. My I couldn't go visit, so my husband would visit, and we were so close. I mean, like your your daughter. I get a lot of comment. Yeah, my I get a lot of comments about this, but I don't care because like she was a person to me. I didn't know her case. You know, I still am just now learning about my own opinions about her case just recently because right. I never wanted to care about that because that's not who she was to me. So I even named my daughter after her. And that's not the worst of it. Rachel has also talked about how Gypsy repeatedly refused to seek mental health and treatment. Despite acknowledging privately that she needed help, Gypsy would admit that she needed therapy, that there were things she had to work on. But every time the opportunity came up to actually follow through, she would find an excuse. She would say the timing wasn't right, that she didn't trust the therapist, or that she was too busy. But what it really came down to was Gypsy's inability to face herself, to look in the mirror and deal with the consequences of her actions. Is she taking advantage of that, or did she no. see a sight? Nothing? No. 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 Aaron, how, Aaron, how many times did I tell her that she needs to go get therapy, even if it's just for the parole board? And what was her response yeah. when you? She said she don't need it, and right. I you think I know it. why. Yeah, it's the same you know. way that I got overcame drugs. I went to NA and I told my story, and I told my story, and I told my story until it just became a story. Right. Rachel also exposed Gypsy's twisted plans regarding men. According to Rachel, Gypsy often spoke about wanting to manipulate men for her own benefit. She would talk about how easy it was to make men believe anything she wanted them to and how she could use her story to get the sympathy, gifts, or even money. There was no genuine connection or desire for a real relationship. It was all about what she could get from them. And this wasn't just talk. Rachel claimed that she saw Gypsy put these plans into action multiple times, using her charm and her victim narrative to lure men in, only to discard them when they no longer served her purpose. And the only time I make him speak is one thing I want him to confirm, because it's one thing he absolutely hated, and I didn't do it. But he wa she wanted me to put her on prison dating websites so she could trick men. Uh, what? Wait, yes. What? And well, I was saying, am yeah. I lying about that? No, I heard you say that, Tags. Honey. Was, like two days before our marriage. Yeah, yeah. Wait, uh -huh. can... she wanted me to do that, huh, honey? Yep. Oh, I believe it. Oh. 100%. I thought I she was, yeah. I know she was scamming other men. I mean, and that, that was that two weeks. She got, she actually got in trouble for it while she was there. What? How was yeah. she scammed him? Uh -oh. oh, well, okay, so it's like a romance scam. You know, uh, you'll be like, I'll be with you when I get out, this and this and this. So... Did they like the yeah. money and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah, she got in trouble for that, but that's the only... These revelations paint a very different picture of Gypsy. One that's a lot less flattering and a lot more disgusting and a lot more disturbing. Instead of the reformed, remorseful person she's tried to present to the world, we see someone who's still deeply manipulative, someone who refuses to take responsibility of her own actions, and who's more interested in playing games with people's emotions than actually making any positive change in her life. And now, with Rachel and Nat both coming forward to tell their stories, it's no wonder Gypsy has chosen to disappear rather than confront the claims. Then there is Nadtha Walker, another former inmate who hasn't held back when it comes to exposing Gypsy's manipulative behavior. Walker has been vocal about Gypsy's refusal to use her massive platform for anything positive. Despite all opportunities Gypsy has had to advocate 
for meaningful causes. She hasn't done anything. Instead, she's focused solely on keeping her name in the headlines and bandaging her image. When Walker called her out on this, Gypsy did respond with humility or any open mind. Instead, she sent a scathing message. It's a pity and an immature response, one that only proves Nat's point. The Gypsy is more concerned with looking good in the public eye than actually being a good person. The only thing I wanted for you, Gypsy, was nothing negative, nothing bad. It was just for you to use your platform for good. This will actually be my last Gypsy video because after this, I'm gonna stop. Because <laughs> it's a waste of my time. It's like talking to a child. You know what I mean? <clears throat> because in none of my videos did I say anything offensive to you whatsoever. Honestly, friendship means that you care about the direction a person is going. And you said our friendship is dead, but we never really had one to begin with because we were just acquaintances. The media portrays people as something that they're not all the time. And I guess I got my real first glimpse of what that looked like with the whole Gypsy Rose shenanigans. You guys are supporting somebody who's a joke. You're supporting someone who has absolutely no interest in you whatsoever but to take your money and to hear your, what's the word I'm looking for, praise. Who's completely self-absorbed. Who was old enough and had so many opportunities to get away. And I don't even know what the system was thinking. <laughs> I really don't. Rather than taking these criticisms to heart, Gypsy has retreated into silence. It's the same old pattern. Avoidance instead of accountability. She knows that these revelations from Brito and Walker aren't just going to go away. And instead of facing them head on, she's choosing to disappear. She's not ready to admit that her actions have hurt people, that her manipulation has consequences, and that her refusal to seek help is affecting not just her, but everyone around her. This isn't the behavior of someone who's grown or changed. It's the behavior of someone who's still trying to control the narrative, still trying to hide behind the victim persona, still trying to hide behind the victim persona while refusing to acknowledge the harm they've caused. And that, more than anything, is why Gypsy's sudden silence speaks volumes. She's running from the truth, and as long as she continues to do so, she'll never be able to truly move forward. Another key element that seems to be driving Gypsy's retreat into silence is the fallout from her attempts to managing her public image through her PR team, Red Banyan. If you were trying to repair your reputation, you might want a team that actually understands authenticity. Instead, Gypsy or those advising her opted for Red Banyan, a firm famous for representing some of the worst social media personalities out there. This decision is a reflection of where Gypsy's priorities lie, not with honesty or transparency, but with damage control. It's about pushing a narrative that portrays her in the best light, regardless of the truth. Hiring a crisis PR firm does it scream. I am innocent. For instance, Raid Bania represented the infamous Central Park Karen, a choice that only emphasizes their willingness to work with anyone willing to pay them, regardless of moral consideration. It paints a very telling picture of the type of people Gypsy has chosen to align herself with. People who aren't interested in the truth but rather in twisting narratives to serve their clients' interests. So it would appear, allegedly and in my opinion, that Gypsy Rose Blanchard or Gypsy Rose Blanchard's PR team are now paying for bot accounts to comment in videos about her to pit content creators against each other. So not only are they specifically targeting me and Nina by filing false copyright claims against our YouTube channels, we now have this going on in my comments. So these comments are from this video that I made about Dan. You can click this comment to go back and look. So in those comments, we have comments like this. In Nina's box, she's making accusations. Girl, Katie Joy is going off on you right now on her panel. Another hop in Nina's box, she's making accusations. Nina is yapping. Hey, OMG, go hop on her panel. Nina is yapping. OMG, go hop on her panel. Nina is yapping. And it just goes on and on and on. Well, newsflash. No, she wasn't because I talked to Nina. None of these things are happening. And when you click on these profiles, this is what they look like. It's typically a profile with very little followers. And then the bio is in another language, which suggests that they're not from the United States. Here's another and another and another. These are what we call bot accounts because there's not real people behind them. They're also commenting and typing the exact same things word for word. But besides the comments, there are also content creators that have messaged me saying that they received messages that I had a problem with them when I have never even spoke about or to that content creator. So they're trying to pit us against each other so that we will focus on arguing with each other and not on what we originally make our content about. So. 
The problem is this strategy of buying silence has backfired spectacularly. Instead of helping Gypsy regain control of her image, it has only made the cracks in her story more visible. People see right through her artificial rebranding. The sudden changes to her profile and the staged positivity, there's no genuine substance to it. It feels like she's desperately trying to apply a shiny new coat of paint over a foundation that's crumbling. And now, with the backlash from her failed PR stunts mounting, Gypsy has gone quiet. This is in the silence of someone reflecting. It's the silence of someone who's running out of options and is hoping to avoid the spotlight until people forget. The situation is further complicated by the backlash from allegations about Gypsy faking a pregnancy. A controversy that's left people both hurt and furious. This isn't a minor rumor. It's something that plays into people's deepest emotions. Especially for those who have faced challenges with pregnancy or fertility, the idea that someone would fake such a thing for attention or sympathy is deeply unsettling. This silence is not just frustrating, it's infuriating for those who believe in her. People were genuinely invested in her story, rooting for her to find redemption and to see her play with their emotions like this is a bit rare. It shows a shocking disregard for the feelings of those who supported her. And instead of clarifying or owning up her actions, Gypsy has chosen to hide, hoping the storm will pass. But that's not how this works. The longer she remains silent, the more it becomes evident that she doesn't want to take accountability. That she would rather disappear than face the consequences of her actions. So what does all this add up to? What is Gypsy's silence really telling us? To me, it looks like she's running from accountability. Gypsy has spent years crafting a narrative through manipulating those close to her, building an image online and even hiring controversial PR firm to keep her image reputation intact. With the mounting allegations, the betrayal of former friends and the growing public backlash, she's out of ways to control the story. Gypsy's disappearance from the social media isn't just a sign of personal growth or self-reflection. It's a move of someone who knows the walls are closing in and doesn't have a clear way out. It's a move of someone who, rather than owning up to their mistakes and trying to grow, is hoping that if they, if they are quiet long enough, the world will move on. But the world isn't moving on. If any, her silence is only intensifying the scrutiny. If Gypsy had truly changed, this would be her chance to step up, to address the rumors and take accountability, to show that she's different now. Instead, she's chosen to run from the spotlight, to avoid facing criticism that has been long overdue. It's easy to paint Gypsy as a victim when you look at her past, but at some point, you have to stop blaming your past for your current actions. At some point, you have to grow up and take responsibility. And right now, Gypsy is showing everyone that she's not ready. Or maybe just not willing to do that. So, there you have it. Gypsy Rose blunted sudden social media silence is a lot more than just taking a break. It's about avoiding responsibility managing a crumbling public image and hiding from the truth at the end of the day the truth always comes out no matter how hard you try to hide it let me know what you all think is gypsy just overwhelmed by the backlash or is this her way of dodging accountability yet again drop your thoughts in the comments below drop your thoughts in the comments below and as always don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any updates as this story continues to unfold thanks for tuning in and i'll see you in the next one